Hello students, welcome to Engineers Academy. Kindly subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet. Now we are going to solve this particular problem from Hebler Statics. In this problem it is said that express each of the force in Cartesian vector form and determine the magnitude and coordinate direction angle of the resultant force. So we are given this F1 which is acting from point A to C and F2 which is acting from point A to B. So we have to find the resultant of F1 and F2. But before that we need to write, we need to represent this F1 and F2 as a Cartesian vector. So now as we know that uh, F1 force vector is equal to F1 magnitude times the unit vector from A to C. So the unit vector from A to C is RAC cape, right? So we can write this as F1 magnitude is 80 pounds. So I will write 80 and RAC is can be represented as the position vector from A to C divided by its magnitude. So we need to find the position vector from A to C. So for that we need to find the coordinates of point A and C from this particular origin, right? So first we need to write the coordinates of this point A. So the coordinates of this point A from that origin is the. in order to reach this point A we need to travel uh, 4 feet in the y direction only since this point A is lying on the y axis. So this means that the x coordinate and the z coordinate of this point A are 0 and this point A is lying 4 feet from the origin in the positive y direction. So we need to write 4 here, right? So the coordinates of this point A from the origin is 0, 4, 0. Similarly, the coordinates of this point C from that origin is that first we need to travel 2.5 feet in the negative x direction. This is the positive x, so we need to travel minus 2.5 feet and then we need to travel this distance right so this distance so we need to find this distance let's say that this is the zc coordinate so we need to compare these two triangles this large triangle and this small triangle right so if we apply the properties of similar triangles so we can write that uh, zc divided by 2.5 the ratio of these two sides will be equal to the ratio of these two sides, right? So, Zc divided by 2.5 will be equal to 12 divided by 5. So, if I multiply both sides by 2.5, so we will get that Zc coordinate. And from this, we will get that this is 6 feet. So, this length is 6 feet, right? So, to reach that point C, we need to travel 2.5 feet in the negative x direction and then we need to travel 6 feet in the positive z direction. And since this point C is lying in the x, z plane, so there is no need to travel along the y axis. So this means that the y coordinate of this point C is 0. So this is in feet, right? And this is also in feet. So now we can find this RAC vector. So this will be 80 multiplied by. So to find this position vector, we need to subtract the uh, coordinates of the tail from the head right so we need to subtract the coordinates of point a from point c so we need to write minus 2.5 minus 0 we need to subtract the corresponding coordinates so this is minus 2.5 and this is 0 so minus 2.5 minus 0 into i plus this 0 minus 4 0 minus 4 j plus this 6 minus 0 k divided by its magnitude. So we can simplify its minus 2.5 minus 0 will become minus 2.5 i. Similarly, this will become minus 4 j and this will become plus 6 k. So now we can we can find the magnitude of this, right? So the magnitude of this will be minus 2.5 square plus minus 4 square plus 6 square and then we will take the square root. So we can find this magnitude directly. So this will be uh, min 
minus doesn't matter when when we are taking square right so i will write 2.5 square plus 4 square plus 6 square so this uh, magnitude of the position vector comes out to be 7.632 feet right so this is 7.632 feet right so now i can write that f1 vector is equal to so now we need to multiply this et with each and every component we need to divide each and every component by this 7.632 right so i will do it directly in calculator right so this is we can write it as 80 divided by 7 point i can take this as common right so i can write this as outside so we can write it like this as well so this is 7.632 so we will be left with this right so now what we need to do is that we need to multiply this ratio with each and every component so i will i will do it using calculator directly right so this will 80 divided by 7.632 multiply by minus 2.5 uh, multiply by minus 2.5 so this is the x component of f1 which is minus 26.20 minus 26.21 approximately then I will multiply this same ratio with minus 4, minus 4, so this gives me minus 41.93 j and then we need to multiply this with plus 6, so this is plus 6, so this is 62.89, so this is plus 62.89 key so this is f1 vector similarly uh, using the same method we can find f2 so i will write f2 vector it will be equal to f2 magnitude times the unit vector from a to b since this f2 is acting from a to b and again we can write that f2 magnitude is 50 and from a to b unit vector will be equal to the position vector from a to b divided by its magnitude and again to find this position vector we need to find the coordinates of that point b so the coordinates of this point b from that origin is that first we need to travel uh, two feet in the positive x direction this is the positive x so i have to write plus two and then we need to travel minus 6 feet in the negative z direction right so i will write minus 6 and since this point b is in the x y plane so this means that uh, there is no need to travel along the y axis so this means that the y coordinate of this point b is 0 so these are the coordinates of that point b so again we can use that same method now we need to subtract the corresponding coordinates of point a from point b so and the magnitude is 50 so 50 So this will be 2 minus 0 so 2 minus 0 is 2 so this is 2 i and this is 0 minus 4 so minus 4 j and this is minus 6 minus 0 so this is minus 6 k and then we will find the magnitude of this position vector right so the magnitude will be 2 square plus 4 square plus 6 square under the square root so the magnitude is uh, 2 square plus 4 square plus 6 square so this is 7.483 so this is 7.483 or uh, we can write it outside so this is 7.483 so now we can write that f2 vector Again, I will multiply this ratio with each and every component using calculator, right? So, this is uh, 5 divided by 7.483 multiply by 2. This is 50. This is uh, 50. So, 13.36 i and then we need to multiply minus 4 minus 26.73 and then multiply by minus 6 so minus 
So, this is the vector representation of that F2. So, this is the Cartesian vector form of F1, this is Cartesian vector form of F2. Now, we need to find the resultant of F1 and F2. So, the resultant of F1 and F2 will be equal to F1 plus F2 vector. And we need to add up the corresponding components of F1 and F2. So, that will give us the resultant. So, I will again do it directly in calculator. So, this component plus this component will give us the x component of the resultant. So, minus 26.21 plus 13.36. This is minus 12.85 i minus 41.93 minus 41.93 plus minus uh, 26.73 so minus 26.73 so minus 68.66 j and uh, 62.89 minus 40.09 so this is 22.8k plus 22.8k. So this is the Cartesian vector form of the resultant. Now we are requ uh, required to determine the magnitude of the resultant. So the magnitude of the resultant is equal to, so we again we need to take squares of all of these and then we need to take the square root, right. So this will be 12. Point 85 square plus 68.66 square and plus 22.8 square and then we need to take the square root. So 12.85 square plus 68.66 square plus 22.8 square. So the magnitude of the resultant is 73.48 approximately. So FR magnitude is equal to 73.48 pounds. Now we are asked to find the coordinate direction angles of the resultant force. So as we know that uh, FR in terms of the coordinate direction angles can be written as fr cos of alpha i plus fr cos of beta j plus fr cos of gamma k and alpha beta and gamma are the angles of the resultant with the positive x y and z axis is right so and fr is the magnitude so again if we compare this vector and this vector so, from this we can see that fr cos of alpha is equal to this thing, right. So, we can write that fr and fr magnitude is known which is 73.48. So, I can write that 73.48 cos of alpha equals to minus 12.85. And from this we can say that cos of alpha is equal to minus 12.85 divided by that magnitude. So, this is cos of alpha. So, if we take cos inverse, then we will be able to find the angle of the resultant with the positive x-axis. So, this means that alpha equals to cos inverse of the ratio of this, this component divided by its magnitude. Similarly, we can write beta is this value. We can write it as cos inverse minus 68.66 divided by magnitude, which is 73.48. And similarly, we can find gamma. So, gamma will be again this 22 cos inverse 22.8 divided by that magnitude which is 73.48. So, cos inverse minus 12.85 divided by 73.48. So, this gives us cos inverse gives us alpha angle is 100 approximately. So this is 100.07 so let's say that this is 100 degrees similarly this is minus 68.66 so this is 159.13 159.13 degrees and similarly the gamma angle is
71.92 so gamma is 71.92 degrees so this is the solution of this particular problem the resultant magnitude is 73.48 and it is making 100 degree with the positive x axis 159.13 degrees with the positive y axis and 71.92 degrees with the positive z axis so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope you people would have understood this problem solution kindly subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet also like this video if you people want me to solve such more problems from hibler static